Hello, everyone. Today is June the 17th, 2013. I want to welcome you to Les Brown's Monday Night Motivation with world-renowned motivational speaker, speech coach, and best-selling author, Les Brown. This is your place, your place for motivation, inspiration, and empowerment. I am Anita Hicks, your host motivational speaker, life coach, and business trainer. I want to thank you for investing in yourself and joining us tonight. And for those of you that are new, welcome to the call tonight. And those of you that are back, welcome back. And after the call, we want to hear from you. You will have an opportunity to send us a message on Les Brown's Facebook page at brown.les. So let us know what your thoughts are about the call tonight. And also, Mr. Brown is going to give you some information on how to email him, where he's going to be, and all of that good stuff. Mr. Brown, how are you? I'm better than good, better than most, and sometimes even better than that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Les, I want to say happy belated Father's Day. I did text you, but I know that you you were being showered with wonderful um, gifts and the presence of your family and grandkids because I know what a wonderful father you are. So I want to say that personally and acknowledge you on this call. So I hope you had a happy Father's Day. Thank you, and, and happy Father's Day to you because even though your mother, you've been serving as a father to your two boys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yes, indeed. All right, but, yes. I had a great time. I spoke at the Church of Religious Science in Oakland, California, and, and Ona spoke with me, and she did a great job. I, I, I called her, but I got to the airport, and I said, Ona, I said, you're not afraid of me anymore. I said, Usually I, I could rattle her, you know, when I would do my part, when I would go first. She's not scared anymore. <laughs> Ona is a bad girl, Les. You taught her well. That's a bad girl. You've done a phenomenal job, so I know she held her own. Yeah, she held her own and some. She did it. I was I was impressed. I had to bring it from down deep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm yeah. going to put the call on mute because we're all ready. Thank you so much. I want to thank all of you for being on this call. This call is, is it's really a, a call. I want you to think about your goals. I want you to think about your life. I've been in a reflective mode. I, I was in... Oakland, California, and and had the opportunity to speak for a very good friend of mine, Reverend E. Reverend E., she has had the Church of Religious Science there in Oakland, California for over 30 years, and and she was kind enough to have me come in to speak, and and my daughter, owner, we shared the platform together and had just an incredible experience, and, and the people from the church, they showed tremendous, tremendous response. I want to, and we're going to do a, a seven-week series there. I've got to get the dates and determine when I'm going to do that. I'm going to be in Raleigh, North Carolina next Tuesday speaking on a major motivational event that's being sponsored by Success Resources. I'm here in New York now, and I'm going to be speaking at the Brooklyn Marriott, Lorraine Watkins. Lorraine Brown Watkins is sponsoring an event at the... Brooklyn Marriott, and the reception is at 6 o'clock. It's been a long time since I've done this type of event in New York, and so I'm excited about speaking in Brooklyn. I'm here already. And I had a dinner with, with a friend of mine, Kelly. I had not seen her for a while. Kelly, and she brought three friends with her. And I, I want you to think about your goals and dreams, and I'm going to give you an assignment today. I'm going to give you an assignment. I want you to write this down. The age of social transformation. The age of social transformation. It's by Peter Drucker. I want you to go online. I want you to Google that. I want you to read it. And I want you to email me to my Facebook, brown.less, and tell me your impression of it. Tell me... How does it speak to you? Tell me how you see this and what is it that you're going to do differently as a result of reading this. Because I read this many years ago, and it governs my thinking. And today, while I was having dinner, just coming upstairs to do the call with you, I heard a conversation Lydia had with her brother. 
and this this conversation she had with him, it really struck me. I, I you know, I, I train speakers, I teach people how to live their dreams, and and I listen. I tell people the best speakers are the best listeners. I went to my 50th anniversary of the class reunion of the class of 1963 at Booker T. Washington High School in Miami, and I was looking at a wall of pictures, and this was a memorial wall of pictures of, of my classmates who had died. And I was shocked as I looked at all of those pictures, probably over half the class gone. And it just hit me. It just dawned on me. I remember I was at an event in, in Las Vegas, and my former wife, Gladys Knight, we were there, and Frank Sinatra was there. And he said something that grabbed me. He said, live each day as if it were your last. Because one day it will be. And as I looked at those pictures, I, I was thinking about the fact that one day somebody's going to be looking at me. Look at last. <laughs> You're not going to be all boy. Nobody has figured out how to get out of here alive. You've got to die to live here, to leave here. And so one of the things that I'm doing, and I suggest that you do, and I want you to write this down, protect your time. As you think about your goals and your dreams, I'm going to start coaching and working with people personally who are serious, who want to reach their goals and dreams. I want to start working personally, one-on-one, -on -one, with people who are serious about learning how to tell their story, want to master the art, because most people are not serious. And at this stage of my life as a two-time cancer conqueror, I, I'm watching my time. I'm very selective. I'm here for Lorraine Watkins Brown, but trust me on this. Had it not been for her, a very good friend, a person that I, I, I love and admire, I wouldn't be here. Because I have a select number of people that I work with that I know that's serious. You know, uh, Stacey N.C. Grant, she's here. I know she's serious. And Kathleen Williams, she's here. I know she's serious. So I work with them. You've got to have friends that you know that are serious. Ed Blunt, you want to work with people that are serious. Let me tell you what, what Lydia said to her, her brother. She said, and, and she was saying this to encourage him, saying this to cause him to wake up. She said, there's a bell ringing. And this bell is ringing loud. And if you don't hear it, she said, you'll be dumb and stupid. If you don't hear it and start running toward that ship and get on it because it's about to take off, you will be left and you'll never catch up. Trust me on this. I asked her, I said, what made you say that? He was around 18 years old at the time, probably doing what most 18-year-olds do. And, and she said, because I feel that. And that article, The Age of Social Transformation, when you read this, you're going to get serious. It's serious. When you read that, you're going to separate from people that are not serious. When you read that, you're going to start using your time in a much more effective, strategic way. And so one of the things I'm encouraging you to do, watch your time, who you spend your time with, and start saying no more often. Say no more often because Every time somebody asks you to do something and you say yes, you say no to your agenda and you're saying yes to their agenda. I want you to keep that in mind. Just start making it a practice to start saying no when people ask you to do something. They say, you know, I, I can't do that. I've got a full plate, but if I find a way in which I can do it, I'll get back to you. See, people love for you to get back to them with good news, they don't want you to get back to them with bad news. Where you say, well, I said yes, but then I'm looking at all the things I've got to do. I've got too many irons in the fire. I can't do it. So you, you want to begin to look at your life in a special kind of way and start valuing yourself and valuing your time. There are a lot of people who will say yes when somebody calls them tonight and say, are you going to see the, the playoffs tonight? They're going to say yes. You're going to see scandal, yes. But very few people are going to get phone calls and say, are you working on your dream tonight? How can we collaborate and work together and make some things happen? Very few people get those kind of calls. So I'm suggesting to you that you're different. You're on this call with me tonight because everything that I represent and the work that I've been doing for over four decades 
the message that I, I speak, that's already a part of you. And you said yes to this telephone call because you know you've got something special. You know you have greatness within you. You know that you have some goals that you want to achieve. And so you're looking for something. And part of what you will look for and what you're going to get is validation of that which you already know in your heart of hearts. I hear something else. That Lydia was right. There's a bell ringing. And a lot of people can't hear it because it's drowned out from the cheers for the Spurs and the Miami Heat. A lot of people can't hear it because it's overshadowed by the exciting episodes of Scandal and other various programs. A lot of people can't hear it because they're caught up in the distractions of life. And I suggest to you that your life is special, that life is God's gift to you, and how you live your life is your gift to God. Now, here's something else. I want you to start thinking from a place of being resourceful. You know, they, they teach us in school reading, writing, and arithmetic. But they also need to teach reading, writing, arithmetic, and resourcefulness. Lorraine called me, and, and she was shocked. Guy called her, and he said, I heard Les Brown is coming to the Brooklyn Marriott. I sure would like to see him. It's been over a year since I've had a job, and i like to see Les. And after he finished telling her his sob story, she said, you know what? I'm going to gift you. I'm, I'm going to let you come free. She said, will you be there? Here's what he said. He said, I'm going to try and see what I can pull together because I don't have any money on my Metro card. Now, let me share something with you, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that don't know. Metro cards. That you can put 2 or $3 on there. You can ride anywhere in New York. But let's say $20. Let me tell you something. If somebody had a message that can change my life, I'll run and jump over the, turn, the turnstall because I know the security guards are not in shape and they're not hungry enough and determined enough to catch me before I can get on one of those trains. I left Miami. My mother was suffering from breast cancer. I didn't have a dime. I spent every dime I had to keep her alive. Most people don't know, 95% of the people who suffer from breast cancer, I mean, who, who, who have had bankruptcy, did so because of medical expenses. And my mother was suffering from breast cancer. And I heard about an opportunity. I went to a, a meeting I wasn't even invited, a guy named Ed Foreman, who had a company called Executive Development. And I saw him. And he said, speaking to the audience, he said, I'm in a business that you can become a millionaire accidentally. Now, mind you, I just left Ohio, resigned from the Ohio legislature. I was generating around eighty to to $100,000 a year, walked away from all of that, no college education, to start over all over again to take care of my mother because I was not going to allow my brothers and sisters to put her in a nursing home because she could no longer take care of herself. And I said, if one woman can raise seven children who could not take care of themselves, at least we as grown people can take care of this one woman. And if you won't do it, I, I will do it. And the, the, I, I can tell you, one sickness can wipe out a fortune. One sickness. And I was looking for something. I was looking for something that will allow me to be able to earn enough money to be able to take care of my mother, be there for her. And, and part of what I did, I was selling the Dick Gregory Bahamian diet. I, did, I was doing every multi-level marketing scheme that came below. It was Amway. I sold Mary Kay. I used to have Mary Kay parties. <laughs> Let me tell you something up in here. I was resourceful. I was resourceful. You, I mean, I've done Herbalife. You name them. I did them. I was resourceful. And this man's training was $2,600. Now, this guy, I didn't have it. This guy, he's saying, and he told a woman, I could, I could not open my mouth to let a woman know even though she's a stranger, that I wasn't resourceful enough to come up with $20. I couldn't do that. She kept on saying, he said that to me. He said that to me. I don't, I don't have enough money on my Metro card. Let me tell you something. We celebrated Father's Day, and, and I say happy Father's Day to all the fathers 
who provide, who love and nurture their families. And happy Father's Day, I said this in church, to all the mothers who serve as fathers. The people said, come on, let us have our day. Come on, what do you mean, have your day? Well, a woman can't raise a boy to be a man. What are you talking about? My mother raised me to be a man, and I'm a man. The men in our community have been raised by women. Stop that. That's a lie from the pit of hell. It's the difference between being a father providing emotional love and financial support. Over 75% of our household the, and the primary breadwinners are women. So come on. Give me a break. And I'm saying to you, the reason that guy said that, oh, well, I've got to see what I can pull together. He needs to pull together his mind, his thinking. He needs to be reminded of the fact that he's made in the likeness and image of God and has been given authority and dominion over everything on the face of the earth. He needs to know that the fact that he's been unemployed does not define who he is and he has the resourcefulness. He's only six inches from success. That's the distance from one year to the next. He needs to spend less time in front of a television and go to the library like Og Mandino did when he was an alcoholic and homeless and turned his life around reading books. How much does a library card cost? Nothing. Og Mandino went in there and read books and changed his life. I was doing a radio program, and a lady called me, and she said, thank you so much for helping me change my life. And I said, well, how did I help you? She said, I was homeless for 23 years. And she says, now I'm working as a social worker. Now I've had a job for over eight years, and I'm helping people to get their lives on track. I said, what was the day that changed your life? She said, one day when I was out panhandling, standing outside of a drugstore, and I asked a lady, would she give me something so I can eat? And she spit in my face. I said, what? She said, she gagged and she spit in my face and walked away. She said she was shocked. She said she wished she could find that woman today to say thank you. I said, why? She said she turned around, she went into Walgreens, went in the restroom, and looked at her face where this woman had spit in her face, and she said, I didn't deserve this. That if I'm so pathetic that somebody can look down on me and spit in my face, she started crying. She washed her face, and she went to the library, and she got my book, Live Your Dreams. She went to the library, and she found cassette tapes of every program that I had done, and she said it spoke to her. And she started taking computer lessons. She learned how to type. And she went to the Salvation Army, got some calls, went out and interviewed and got a job and eventually got a place to stay, went back to school, got a degree. She got a master's degree in social work, and now she's helping other homeless people. Come on now. Come on. I mean, I cried. I cried as I, as I listened to her story, as I... Listen to her voice. I cried. She said, what, what is it that could cause this woman to look at me and spit in my face? She said, at that time I was outraged, but I would thank her today because of what she did. She spit in my face and turned my life around. There's a bell ringing that a lot of people don't hear. A bell ringing that says there's no such thing as job security. A bell ringing that says, the day where you can go to college and graduate and, and find a job and work 40 hours a week for 40 years, that day is gone. A bell ringing that says, it doesn't matter how good you are, 
your job can be outsourced. You can be replaced with an app. There's a bell ringing that says you got to stay ahead of technology. And one day, somebody sitting in a room looking at the figures, and the more money you make, the bigger the target is on your back. There's just a number of days before they come to you and say, we're going in another direction. And say, we have sold the company, and, and they don't need your services anymore. There's a bell ringing that says you've got to be on the cutting edge. You've got to have your own back. You've got to get a hold of yourself. You've got to prepare yourself. You've got to develop yourself. You've got to stay ahead of the game. There's a bell ringing that requires that you pay attention, that you wake up and smell the coffee, that you be selective of the relationships that you, that you have surrounding you, that you look at yourself and look at your goals and look at your dreams and ask yourself, what do I want? And that there must be a willingness on your part to do whatever is required, required to make those things happen. A bell ringing with this that you must be goal-oriented. You've got to know where you're going. There's a bell ringing that says you want to be selective of your relationships. There are two types of relationships, nourishing relationships and toxic relationships. Most people are toxic. Most people have to think about, let me see what I can pull together to come up with $20 or, or $3 or $10. Most people are operating out of a mindset of mediocrity because they are not growing. They are not developing themselves. They have a limited vision of themselves. They're suffering from possibility blindness. They're caught up in the distractions of life. They're addicted to powerlessness. Addicted to being powerless. They see themselves as being victims. They don't know who they are. And if you're around them, it will affect you. If you're around them, it will contaminate your spirit. If you're around them, it will compromise your power. It's a bell ringing. A ship is leaving. And only a few are going to catch it. Only a few will wake up and hear what's happening. Only a few will turn off the television and turn up their lives. Only a few will come out the stands and say, I don't want to be a spectator. I want to be a player. Only a few will say, I want to write my own ticket. I want to be my own boss. I want to create something out of my spirit. Only a few will understand the words of John H. Johnson of Ebony Magazine who wrote the book Making It Against All Odds, who said there's no defense against an excellence that beats a pressing public need. It's a bell ringing for people that are hungry people that are resourceful, people that are disciplined, a bell ringing for people who have dreams and goals and vision and ambition and unstoppable. There's a bell ringing and few there be that will hear it because they're caught up in the noise of life. Yeah, they're trifling. They're thrown in the tower. They died a long time ago. They just haven't been bear it yet. They're angry and they're bitter. They spend more time getting high and talking about how bad things are and what the man won't let you do rather than go to a library that does not cost a dime to get in and start reading something that can expand their mind and give them a vision of themselves in the future. You have something special. This is the time that you want to develop your mind. You want to study. Why less? Because knowledge is the new currency. This is the time that you want to get up and go to a new land, go to another part of town, go to some places where you can find some friends and develop some new friends and some new relationships and start hanging around people that have something going for them. That's why I started hanging around a guy like, named Bob Boyd, who passed a few weeks ago. Because he had something hanging. 
he had something going on for them. This uh, started learning from Mike Williams. He had something going for him. He, he was intelligent. I love to hear him speak. And wherever he showed up, they called him Treetop because his afro was so big. I showed up, and I sat there, and I was hanging on every word, admiring him because he had something I wanted. So you, 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 you want to be in relationship with people who can see what you can't see. You want to be in relationship with people who are doing what it is you want to do. You want to be around people that's achieving and making things happen and developing themselves and growing and stretching and that will hold you accountable. Yeah, the bell ringing that's alerting you to the fact that you have something special. You have greatness within you and to prove it, God chose you out of 400 million sperm. There's something in you. That's why you're listening to me. There's something in you that wants to express, that wants to come out. There's something in you that you are supposed to do. There's a mission, there are gifts, there are dreams, there are talents in you. That's why you listen. That's why you listen. Yeah. There's a bell ringing. And you heard it a long time ago. And you know it's time to, to not give yourself a pass, to let go all of excuses for playing small. A bell ringing that says, you don't have forever. Aurelia said, stop living like you have a thousand years to live. You have something special. You have greatness within you. I got a call from Lorraine Brown Watkins who said you got people coming in from Chicago, from Virginia, people coming from many places to the Brooklyn Marriott tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. I'm early here eating hot pepper to fork. I, I can't wait to see them tomorrow. This is one of the special places that I love. Can't wait to go back to Oakland, Reverend E's Church. We're going to do a seven-week series there. And I'm looking. I'm, I, know, I know that there's some of you listening to me right now. You know who you are. You know who you are. I'm supposed to work with you. You know who you are. We're supposed to have a closer relationship. You know who you are. I'm supposed to coach you. You know who you are because you can feel me in your heart. You know who you are. And I don't know you. I know you can't sneak up on me. I know the pigeons. I see them every day. But I know there's something that happens. I, I met someone today, and, and I knew I was in the presence of greatness. I knew it. And they sat down at the table with me. Lydia and Rashad, I knew. When Kelly Hill brought them to dinner, great, that I was in the presence of greatness. People have a big vision to make a difference in life. They want to make their mark. I suggest to you, find someone that you can be a protege to, like I did with Mike Williams. Find someone who can see what you can't see and be mentored like Mike Williams did for me. Find someone that can take you to a place within yourself that you can't go by yourself, that can see what you can't see because you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. Find someone that can help you hear the bell that's ringing, calling on you to bring out your greatness. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I want to see you tomorrow night at the Brooklyn Marriott. Those of you that are in this area, if you have friends in this area, call them. Or friends you know that need to be here, call them and let them know. But I heard Ed Foreman, I caught a Greyhound bus because I didn't have the money, but I was resourceful. I had bid with card games. I was running Boston's after Boston's and raised money, selling slices of my mother's sweet potato pie, and she fixed me some marinated frog legs. And I went from Miami, Florida to Dallas, Texas on a Greyhound bus. 
trading frog legs for pork chop sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> and fish sandwiches. <laughs> these weren't sandwiches, these were sandwiches. <laughs> Who'd have thought? In pursuit of a dream to take care of my mother. Who'd have thought? In pursuit of a dream to buy her home. And I bought her four different homes. Who would have thought? Because I was resourceful. Because I didn't let the distance stop me. Or the $2,600 stop me for a two and a half day training to teach me something I didn't know. That it would lead to my traveling around the world. And changing millions of people's lives. Don't you underestimate me. Don't you judge yourself based upon where you are in your circumstances or your your bank account being empty. Don't you judge yourself because you're sleeping in somebody's basement or on somebody's couch or sleeping in your car as I did on many occasions. Judge not according to appearances. Judge not according to appearances, but righteous judgment. You've got greatness in you. I'd like for you to to go and and to Google the age of social transformation and download that. Read it and email me. I want to hear your comments on my Facebook, brown.less, the one with over 100,000 likes, brown.less. I want your comments. I want to hear from you. And I look forward for those of you that are hungry, that can hear the bell at the Brooklyn Marriott. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Nita Boo? Last powerful message, powerful message tonight. Thank you so much. Now, you've given us all an assignment, and we're supposed to look at, read the book, The Age of Social Transformation. Yeah, it's Peter not a book, it's a report. It's a report by Peter Drucker. It was in the magazine called The Avenue of the Americas magazine, but they can get it just by the title, The Age of Social Transformation. Why don't you okay. read that? Why don't you do that? And, and, and I tell you, it's, 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 it's eye-opening about where things are, and this is what has governed my thinking. If people are in a state of shock because of how things have changed so rapidly, and they're going to continue to change. You, can, you don't even have to go to the bank to, to deposit a check. You can take a picture of your check, and it's in your account. I'm Absolutely, you yes. I, yes, I'm not making this up. Technology. There, there are places where they used to have hundreds of employees, but because of technology, it has now been outsourced or technology is doing it. It's, it's a whole yeah. different game right now. And, and, it, and, it's, and it's, it's going to accelerate before the end of this decade. 67% of the jobs in this country will be permanent part-time jobs with no health benefits. I'm going back to Malaysia and Singapore at the end of this month. Then I'm going to Belgium, and then I'm going to South Africa uh, July the 19th and the 20th. I'll be there with Tiha Eckert and, and Robert Kiyosaki in South Africa. And then I'm coming back home, and, and my goal is, is to work with people that are, that are serious, because everybody is not serious, only a few. Only a few people that are serious. And those are the ones that I want to work with who are hungry like I have been and am right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Les, you wrote on your Facebook page um, about um, it takes courage. Most people don't have the courage to deal with the emotional consequences. So that's really one of the reasons why people are not taking the necessary action. So it really does it's take courage. courage. But, but also it's a, it's, a, it's a willingness to do what's required. You know, Jesus said, whosoever will, let him come. Most people, I believe this, that particularly in this country, that the world does not consist of the haves and the have-nots. It consists of the wills and the will-nots. Mm. Wow. Most people are not willing to go to a library and read a book. They're not mm -hmm. willing to go back to school and be in class with people that's young enough for their grandchildren, as the Dr. Lorette did, and got her doctorate at 69. They're not willing to train themselves, to discipline themselves, to do the homework. They're not willing to do that. 
Now, here's an interesting thing, though. I know people who won't do that, but they'll go out and try and what they call slain drugs and go to jail. I know people who will go out and try and sell drugs or rob people or steal and go to jail, do stupid, dumb things and ruin their lives, compromise their future. I, I talked to a guy in the airport. I was just curious about him. He's unemployed. His whole arm is a sleeve of tattoos. And I asked him, I said, how long did it take you to get all these tattoos on one arm? And he said, look like, you know, an aquarium had fish and everything. And his parents' names, of course, because in case he forgot his parents' names, he can look at <laughs> his arm and see their names. <laughs> all the way up to his shoulder. And, and he said, several weeks. Wow. And I, and I said, how much did it cost you? And he said, around $2,100. Now, he's unemployed. He's at the airport waiting tables. And all I could, could think about, what if he spent several weeks working on his mind? What yeah. if he spent several weeks developing a skill? See, Michael Jordan had the capacity to win a championship, but he didn't have the skill set to win it until he got a coach named Phil Jackson who came along. All of us are born with the capacity to live an achievement-driven life. But we must be willing to invest in ourselves to get a life coach like you, like Stacey N.C. Grant, like Ona, that will help them to develop the skill set to use their capacity to manifest their dream. Most people are not willing to do that. Absolutely. And, yes, and so, so that's why there's a scripture that, and it, it at first, when I read it, I said, oh, that's cold-blooded. He that has shall get, and he that hath not, even that that he has shall be taken away. Say, excuse me, if I have, I will get, but if I have not, even that little bit I have, you're going to take that from me? And, and the question becomes, he that hath what? Vision, that's discipline, right. ambition, goals, dreams, intelligence. Insight, you will get. And if you don't have those things, even that that you have will be taken away from you. That's why the majority of people who win the lottery end up broke. That's why guys who play professional sports, two years after they retire, they're unemployed, they're divorced, and bankrupt. Because everything that they got, if your success, if your growth, if your acquisition, the things that you acquire, it exceeds your own sense of self-worth, you will unconsciously engage in self-destructive behavior. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So, so I'd like for those of you that's on this call tonight, I want you to go to my Facebook. I want to hear your comments and leave and read the page that's there today, brown.less. Thank you, Nita. I appreciate you. And yes, let me you are a fireman. That's all I can say. I tell you, I, you you really yes. keep reinventing yourself. So I thank you. You truly are such an inspiration and motivation to me. I, well, I, thank I just, you. you well, I'm in New York. York. <laughs> See, I'm in New York. I'm in New York, and I got a toothache. <laughs> I'm in New York. So you know, when you're in New York, you got to bring it. Let me tell you. You got to bring York it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you, idea. thank you, thank you. Hold on, hold on. All right. Don't go anywhere. I got to tell you that here's how New Yorkers are. This is a true story. I was in a cab. Blind man crossing the street with a dog. The light changes. The guy starts blowing home. Boom, boom, boom. I said, hey, man, the man is blind. The cab <laughs> driver said, that dog knows better. He's been trained. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I said, hello, New York. That's what I'm talking about. I love this city. So okay, you got to bring it in New York. I hear you. Oh, trust me. I'm going to have them speaking in untold, non, unknown tongues. I'm an assassin. I'll kill every <laughs> mediocre demon that's in the house tomorrow night. Well, you go get it. We're looking forward to seeing you in Raleigh on the oh, 24th, yeah. 25th. Yeah, I'll um, be the first you... speaker up. Yeah, next Tuesday, I'll be the first speaker up. I'm going to pull okay. over way. And I think yeah. it's the PNC Arena. I think that's where you're going to be. 
in yes, Raleigh, North okay. Carolina on the 25th, and that's going to be in the a.m. at around 8, yes, 8 o'clock? Yes, a.m. Yes, I'll be oh. the first one up, and then I fly out of there, going to Malaysia and Singapore, and then I'll be back home. Got to have a root canal. I'm trying to hold out because I, I, I've got, I want to be 100% ready, but I've got to do a four-day training over there, and I don't want to fly after having oral surgery. So I'm just praying. I want you all to pray that this root canal don't go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Les, we know you scared. We know you scared. That's all right. We're going to pray for you, all of those that are on the phone. We know, we know the real deal. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank let you, me, Les. Me we appreciate yeah. you. All yeah, right, everyone. Talk. Well, yeah. you've heard the message tonight. You have your commission to go read the article on the age of social transformation by Peter Drucker. And also, Peter Drucker. please. P P it's, P yeah, it's Peter Drucker. Peter Drucker. Peter, Peter Drucker. Very good. All right. And also visit Les Brown's page at brown.les. That's the one with 115,000 likes. And also you can visit Mr. Brown's Facebook page. His his website at www.lesbrown.com, and we want to hear from you on his Facebook page and invite someone on the call next week, and, and we encourage you to invest in yourself. Get a life, life coach. Get some trainings. Being on the call is great, but we want you to invest in yourself. My name is Anita Hicks, and you can reach me on my website at www.anitahicks.com, or you can email me at Anita at anitahicks.com. And again, everyone, we thank you for joining us, and we look forward to having you on the call next week. And I want to remind you, as I, as I always do, to never, ever give up on your dreams because the world awaits your light, your authentic gift. God bless you all, and God bless your dreams. Good night, everyone. <laughs>